Oh well, I think it's been it's been created to patch up many of the failings and surveillance of terror suspects in France over the past, you know, ten or more years. For example, the person that carried out the attack on the priest in Rouen in in France recently. Uh, was actually being surveyed by the police. He had been released from prison and he was under a surveillance order, yet that somehow didn't stop him from going to commit um, a terror attack. This has been a pattern that's uh, been relevant to several other attackers um, that have carried out attacks in France. But it also is, is a bit confusing in a way as well because several attackers also never seem to show up on the radar of the security services. So that's another reason why this is being created in a sense to try and capture, to sort of cast the net a little bit wider, but also a little bit deeper, to try and get a hold of really uh, what's going on and the people that they should be watching on French soil. I suppose uh, the, the, the logical question to ask is if there are already uh, mechanisms by which to be following people and, 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 and to be uh, monitoring their uh, terrorist activities uh, or their you know, reported uh, activities or intentions, um, is this really the answer to 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 create a new uh, unit, or it, would it be more uh, logical to to make the units that we already have more effective? Well, this is actually this is the, centrally the fundamental question, I think, and only time will tell. I mean, one of the problems that France has already with its internal security forces is that they're quite balkanized and they don't really like to talk to each other. So the, the, the whole idea of Macron in creating an anti-terrorist brigade and also the measures that have come out today is to try and centralise these powers in one place so that it's much easier for uh, politicians, policymakers and indeed the security service to know really what's going on on the ground. But the risk of doing that is to further complicate the picture and to really further duplicate services and really add to those problems of uh, balkanisation and communication. And really, I think with this, only, only time will tell, but there is a significant a possibility here that it may just create further problems. Well, the government would say that 25 attacks have been prevented since uh, January 2017 in the last year and a half. And, and indeed, uh, fingers crossed, we haven't seen any major large-scale uh, attacks recently. Uh, something must be working. Possibly. I mean, this, this is where it becomes an interesting conversation because, I mean, sometimes these statistics can be quite misleading. Uh, what a government may tell you is uh, their ability to foil a terror plot may be something that is on quite tenuous evidence. Um, and something that for me still remains extremely worrying about the French case is the lack of the ability of the French security services to get a grip on the banal insecurity in France. I mean, we're still seeing large amounts of Kalashnikovs washing up in French cities. We're still seeing people being uh, shot in gangland, uh, score settlings in Marseille and in Paris. Um, I mean, these things, I think, are, are, are really um, significant areas of, of, of concern for me because they are... Crime is the transit route through which terrorists for the uh, 13th of November attacks in Paris actually got hold of their military-grade weapons. And I think until France gets a grip on this sort of daily insecurity, um, it doesn't matter how many plots that they foil, we still have that risk of heavy military-grade weapons being available on the ground for comparatively quite little amounts of money.